Hello again. Welcome to another episode of the Construction Record Express, or TCR Express, as more and more commonly known. I'm your digital media editor, Warren Fry, and with me I have... I'm staff writer Russell Hickson, broadcasting live from... Well, this isn't live, but broadcasting from East Vancouver, BC. Narrowcasting, really. <laughs> We've gotten it all wrong, right off the top. Sure. So let's weave right back into our area of expertise, which would be construction. And you tell me, Russ, what's happening this week in the West? Yeah, um, so I'm chatting with some safety research experts about uh, summer fatality and uh, serious incidents. Um, mm -hmm. They Apparently they spike in the summer. And I talked to, I'm going to, well, I haven't talked to him yet, but I'm going to be talking to an expert that uh, he works with a group called ISN, and they've looked at more than 55,000 incidents, and they've poured over that data, and he's going to tell me some tips and tricks and things uh, that uh, employers, contractors, and people can do to try and avoid some of the dangers that can happen during the summer months. So I'm going to learn mm -hmm. about what some of the common circumstances are that uh, you know lead to serious incidents or fatalities, um, you know the common types of activities, um, stuff like that. So it, it should be interesting and I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I seem to recall in previous years, heat was the big one during the summer months, just where it gets way too bad for, for people to work in. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, there's, there's definitely parts of North America. He looked at us data as well. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, there's definitely extreme areas of the United States and Canada where it gets really, really hot. I mean, me and you have both been to Toronto. We're, we're delicate mm -hmm. West coast boys. That's true. We are dainty when flowers. It's like really. forty degrees. I start having a hard time <laughs> with so, humidity, no less. Yeah, yeah, it gets rough, and so um, yeah, he's going to talk to me about that sort of stuff. Um, should be interesting. And mm -hmm. I'm also in the middle of working on a story, um, about zero emissions rule changes in the city of Vancouver. Uh, it looks like they're considering delaying change certain 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 changes for about a year. And, you know, some groups like the home builders that I'm trying to chat with, they're they're supportive of this. They think that these changes should be delayed. Um, uh, they, they think that it adds a lot of costs and a lot of difficulties to uh, housing and trying to increase increase the housing supply. Um, but I've also I, I've chatted with, um, you know, passive house experts and, you know, high performance building suppliers. And they say, we're ready to go. Let's do this. Let's stick with the plan. Let's not deviate mm -hmm. from it. You know, we are in a climate emergency and we need to improve the performance of our buildings now. And they're kind of trying to kick kick the construction industry in the butt a little bit and say, come on, let's go. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to get both sides of this and uh, I'm still working on it. But hopefully that'll be out, you know, in uh, in the next few days. And we'll mm -hmm. see what the what Vancouver City Council decides to do with this if, if they, you know, delay the um, implementation of these changes um, or if they, you know, stay the course. It's an interesting twist because Vancouver in particular prides itself and in a way defines itself on how much environmental stuff it does. So this is a, I mean, it may be ne necessary to, to clear the backlog, who knows, but uh, it's interesting that it's, I don't know, it's a change in image, but it's definitely something you didn't see coming in, in this city. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You're right. Definitely, Vancouver does have a, a an identity as being a very green city, mm -hmm. a very progressive city. Um, so, I, from the little that I've read, I believe that the mayor is supportive of considering delaying the changes. Um, so we'll 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 see we'll see what the council says, and we'll see what happens. Okay, sounds good. Uh, anything else on the on the go? That's it for now. I'll keep the rest under wraps, and uh, I'm sure we'll chat again soon. All right. Sounds good. On to the East. Daily Commercial News staff writer Don Wall reported today the Construction Center in Ontario will be permitted to resume full-time activities Friday as the province moves into Step 1 of its Roadmap to Reopen plan. The provincial government announced Monday that Step 1 will officially be launched at 12.01 a.m. on Friday, and it confirmed the new status for construction. Don's also reported on the federal government yesterday issuing 23 knowledge synthesis grants to support researchers gathering evidence and updating existing studies on mobility and public transit issues. The grants will lead to more evidence-based decisions on transportation infrastructure spending and will help to explore the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, given early evidence suggests that commuting behavior and settlement patterns have been altered in many communities. 
That's it for TCR Express. Uh, if you'd like to listen to us, you can do so on Apple Music, Amazon Music, and Spotify, and on the Daily Commercial News and Journal of Commerce websites. And make sure to tune in Friday for the Construction Record Podcast. Thank you, everybody. Mm-hmm.